beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder and a picture can speak a thousand words are the age old adages we have grown up with how would it be when the beholder captures the beauty and creates the picture ethically and with integrity to top that leads from the front in training others to follow suit and photo walks the talk sounds epic doesn't it and this beholder that i aditya nori from team nature's orbit is proud to introduce to you in our fourth episode of the torchlight series is the ace ethical natural photographer kuntala roy choudhury born and brought up in guwahati assam kuntala roy choudhury completed masters in law in 2016 she has served as guest lecturer in postgraduate program of law guwahati university since 2016 to 2020 currently she is working as assistant professor in ajmal law college kojai and also pursuing phd in environmental law she started her stint in phot photography in 2012 she is an avid nature lover and passionate photographer and has conducted many workshops till date she has been recognized as sony alpha artisan by sony india private limited in 2019 a very warm welcome to you kuntala today it is a privilege to have you here with us thank you so much thank you. yeah thank you first of all i would like to yeah thank uh, team nature sarvit for inviting me here and sure. the wonderful of the session you aditya nuri for having me here in the show uh thank you so much uh sure, sure. Yeah. it's our pleasure it's our it's our pleasure honor and privilege to have you here with us uh, kuntala and we yeah, really yeah. want to know much more about mm -hmm. you and the work that you're doing okay. for nature mm -hmm. so uh i would like to first ask you can you please walk us through your journey what made you focus on the lens apart from the law so my journey started in my childhood itself because i have been brought up in a very beautiful campus of guwahati university uh, i have always been surrounded by various beautiful natural creatures in the campus so it was like full of greenery full of nature and like i fell in love with those natural creature in my childhood and also uh, i used to see my mother and my uh, brother elder brother they used to rescue some you know uh, injured birds during monsoon season and all this so i uh, like i developed the interest in them in wildlife and in like nature then uh, when i was in school uh, say uh, Uh, i think i was in class 6 or 5 i don't clearly remember but my father he bought me one camera one real camera at the time digital camera was not there i uh, but it was not that available it was there but it was not that available so he bought me one real camera yasika real camera at the time i uh, did not know anything about photography what photography is i did not even know the term photography so uh i started clicking everything i like you know starting for, from a flower from any leaf any birds anything uh, human beings my family members whenever i go i carry the camera wherever i go i used to capture various things so uh my journey started there Uh, but i didn't know anything about photography and i did not did not have any idea that i'm going to pursue photography i'm going to uh, have so much interest in photography in the future at that time so it's as a there yeah but then in 2012 only i got my first dslr camera uh, so then only i started photography very seriously because i uh, actually in 2011 uh we uh, i with my you know uh, law friends uh, when i was studying dllb at the time so uh, we were uh, we were in a excursion program uh, we went to excursion to shimla manali and also i fell in love with those places so beautiful places they are so like i uh, i was so uh, like um, 
it was it i i developed the desire within myself to capture all those beautiful things and like keep them with me all the time like so uh, at that time this desire you know went uh, to it, it it started increasing so like uh, in 2012 my dad bought me a dslr again i was again a student at the time so he had to buy me a camera then also so i started very seriously you know the photography and i started joining various workshops and like i started learning from the senior photographers uh, because if internet is there facebook i started using facebook and like i got to meet various you know photographers senior photographers um, uh, on that platform and like i started learning from them observing them so i didn't have any you no know, formal education in photography but i learn from everybody i whenever i get chance so that's how yes it started, it yeah Uh, it's very nice to know that, and uh, something that started from your childhood, and uh, you developed interest. And due to having that kind yeah. of interest, you went on to even pursue further and further into this journey. We also want to know, like uh, you said, like you you have studied law. So out of the various law, why environmental law? Actually, environmental law. Actually, my LLM specialization was not environmental law. Ah, uh, my specialization was constitutional and administrative law because ah uh, ah uh, due to unavailability of that course, environmental law in LLM in very in our places. So. So I went for this uh, constitutional and administrative law, and also I keep interest in those areas also. But I really developed this passion for environmental law because I know it's one of those tools through which I can at least contribute to our environment. So like camera, and this is another tool law. So ah, uh, I did my you know LLM dissertation in. the area of environmental law even though it was not in the syllabus i i took this you know uh, topic and then in phd also yes i am doing in it, it is in environmental law because i really keep special interest in this subject uh, because i think i love nature so much i i you know I love to be with in nature. Uh, I mean, whenever I go to forest, whenever I go inside any, you know, this kind of jungle and forest, I find peace within myself. And I feel it so bad seeing that these things are, you know, reducing day by day. It's destroying. It's being like, um, it's reducing the resources. The the resources we have in the natural resources. The Forest covers on the earth. It's reducing day by day due to various destructive reason of the human being, and so I feel bad, a bit bad. So therefore, I I always think that this environmental law it's one of such areas in law which can at least protect or which can contribute at least a little towards the conservation and like. Mm, protection of the forest etc so therefore i uh, have chosen this uh, this part of law that's very nice to know uh, kuntala like uh, uh, apart from capturing the beauty of nature you are uh, very committed to uh, protecting nature and uh, for which reason you have uh, specialized in environmental law uh, yeah to protect it in all angles in the legal angle as well as uh, you know in the practical angle so that's very nice to know thank you so much for sharing that uh, and uh, also like can you tell us more about the photo walks and workshops you have conducted till date uh so till date i have actually conducted a lots of photo walks and workshops uh in various places of assam uh and online workshops during the pandemic in various places of india also so uh actually i have learned from various platform and uh, there is no uh, such a definite platform from which i could learn so i learned from different people i i i was with different different associations from which i used to learn photography so i feel that whatever i learn i need to share with with the newcomers with the beginners because uh you can get those lessons those you know um, you know 
various teaching you know uh, photography classes on youtube also but it's very important to guide those newcomers in a proper way i feel so so the proper way should be it's very important and uh, in online method it's a bit difficult to show how to capture how to hold the camera how to change the things and how to you know change the settings of a camera in different kind of situations it's a bit difficult through this online platforms so like i you know started with i i was associated with uh, an organization photography organization here in assam it's, uh, now i'm not associated with any organizations but like uh, when i was associated uh, with those organizations i used to conduct various photo works okay so in those photo walks or uh, and like workshops i uh, the people uh, used to you know participate in the workshops and like i i really enjoy sharing whatever i know and also i learn from them because they even though they are newcomers they are beginners but they know a lot about i mean i mean they you know they do research on whatever they like people has that tendency right so i learn from them i share my knowledge with them so it's a give and take you know process through which we grow i'm still growing by conducting this kind of things yeah and also nowadays i as i am associated with sony india so i conduct workshops men workshops on behalf of sony india so like uh, yeah i i am still doing that also various universities school colleges they may be uh, workshops for their students yeah so and uh, uh, that's excellent uh, to know about that and uh, also that you know as you said now you're going along with the people the students uh, you put yeah, together are growing together mm. mm-hmm. and, and you know in this uh, world of you know online uh, classes and uh, zoom and uh, things like that uh, you know your keen interest in uh, having uh, you know teach people in person is uh, very great and uh, that's i think this is one field like in photography you need to uh, exactly you know, teach in person uh, yeah yeah because there are essence. some subjects say law law we can teach law through online platform and that is not a big uh, issue but photography it's like a practical thing law you know yes. we i mean uh, if you want to conduct this uh, you know physics phys- experiment in physics or chemistry so you, you need to use the laboratory like uh, yes. the field or the nature this is our laboratory as photographers so we need to be in nature or be in the field to capture a good photograph or to practice or to develop ourselves that's important yes yes, yes absolutely mm-hmm. absolutely and uh, it's awesome that uh, you know you're sharing this with us uh, so that other people will also get inspired in taking on you know doing these kind of workshops and photo walks so mm-hmm. thank you for that uh and uh, yeah you were talking about sony um india private limited so can you tell us more about your association with uh, sony uh, india private limited and other organizations as well uh currently uh uh i am uh, i actually i was recognized as sony alpha artisan they call it sony alpha artisan because the sony india they have this program sony alpha sony alphas are their mirrorless cameras so mm. i think uh, like uh, sony cameras not uh, like it's everybody know this sony mirrorless cameras are the excellent cameras in the field of mirrorless cameras okay so uh these days it, i mean technology is changing it's developing so we have i mean uh, we have our dslr cameras now it's a time of the mirrorless cameras okay there are so many advantages of those mirrorless cameras and this technology is currently be it's currently by so nafa so uh, they they have they have you know some excellent photographers i think we have 18 uh, photographers in all over india uh, like we are like brand ambassador of this program and they call it sony alpha artisan so i am associated with them uh, with them as sony alpha artisan since 2019 
and yeah like this is the first time i am officially associated with any such kind of uh, company or uh, such kind of institution uh, before that i was uh, i i uh, i had experience working with other companies also but that was not official i did not uh, i i was not associated officially but this uh, this sony india uh, private limited the sony alpha artisan program i uh, this is the first time as an official brand ambassador for the program and like yeah i really uh, i feel so privileged and so honored to be one of those uh, photographers from all over india because they have like uh, i mean they have photographers or they have uh, the sony alpha artisans like who i consider my you know god of photography like uh, for example dinesh kumble sir chutiman mukherjee sir varun aditya and there are lots of uh, you know renowned wildlife photographer renowned uh, you know wedding photographer renowned uh, portrait photographer or journalist or uh, photojournalist uh, uh, they have the, uh, as their artisan so i i feel very much honored to be a part of them and learn from them a lot because they are seniors they are very much experienced and they are like i learn from them seriously and like so i am really grateful to for this opportunity and i conduct workshops uh, for them uh, because i my specialization my um, special uh, the genre i have in special interest in photography are wildlife and macro especially macro so i conduct workshop uh, sony workshops with other organization in association with other organizations on the topic of wildlife photography macro photography and conservation photography all those areas i i, I cover i so like it's uh, it's wonderful to be with them because the sony alpha family sony india by sony india private limited it's very nice to be with them yes i mean uh, that that sounds fabulous actually uh, you know mm -hmm. like many of the youth and youngsters who are uh, avid photographers i'm sure uh, by just hearing this they'll get inspired to pursue even further and get recognized like with uh, by such uh, prominent organizations like sony india right yeah limited. yeah yeah that's a, like uh, it's a privilege because uh, we do photography but also back of our mind like recognition right is useful and get this kind of you know opportunities yes yes it really matters a lot yes definitely Sure, Kunal. Thank you for that. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, so, uh, can you tell us how important is ethical photography and how you have practiced it so consistently uh, in your love of uh, nature? Ah, uh, yeah, actually, your voice was breaking. Can you please pardon? Yeah, sorry. I'll just repeat that again. So. Um, can you tell us how important is ethical photography and how you have practiced it so consistently in your love of wildlife and nature yeah in wildlife photography maintaining the ethics is most important most important yeah, which area we often ignore okay so in order to get a great photograph in order to get a unique photograph we often forget forget that ethics those ethics we need to follow in wildlife photography because uh, in wildlife photography our subjects are the animals the birds the insects etc right so what happen they do not know how to pose they do not know that, that if we are going to harm them or we are going to kill them or what we are going to do with them so they do not have any idea so we need, we are ultimately evading into their territory right so we are like aliens for them so we need to take care of that their mindset we need to take care of their habitat because you know if we do not love our subjects because these are our subjects right and if we do not love our subject we do not think about our subjects then some day 
as you already know this our wildlife our forest everything is degrading day by day if as photographer we are also contribute we also contribute towards the degradation in although in a very little extent then also we we, we will eventually lose our subjects one day so we need to protect them as photographers i think it's our duty to have you know a thoughtful mindset while you know capturing their photograph so say for example ethical photography why it matters because um, while we are going inside the forest we are already in their territory that is not our territory it's there we are entering in their home houses so they get threatened they can leave their houses because they know we are powerful than than them they know they are small insects or birds so they can leave their home out of fear okay if they leave their home out of fear then what about their chicks what about their nest it will get destroyed again indirectly we are destroying we are contributing towards destroying a new generation of our subject so we need to be very much careful while capturing a photograph and yes for me a photograph is not important than the life than the you know habitat of our subjects or our animal or wildlife whatever it is so it's a photograph because i have seen there are so many photographers wildlife photographers who i i also do this same because i wait so patiently to get get a good photograph i can wait for days and days to get a single photograph but there are some photographer who apply some shortcuts some unethical ways to do the same photograph which is actually bad we cannot a photograph will give us glamour a photograph is give us some money okay but what we are doing we are destroying our future that way so i think it's very much important to you know to keep all those things in mind you know before clicking a photograph and ethics so those kind of it there are some ethics we will i think i yeah i always used to i say all this ethics in my workshops actually in my wildlife photography workshops there is always a section called this do's and do nots so i like i used used to highlight those things so that the newcomers they can get the idea what they need to do while doing wildlife photography and what they do not need to do what they should not do so yeah i always try to apply in my life also this kind of things yeah and uh, very rightly said by you you know like uh, in the pursuit of taking good photographs uh, people mm -hmm. kind of you know destroy the habitat and destroy the nature yeah, yeah. and you know mm -hmm. mother nature is there for us to capture in photography but it doesn't mean that we spoil mother nature in the process right and uh, this is a very important aspect you have touched uh, you know to be very ethical and to be very careful thoughtful as you said it's about thinking about you know where i am and what i'm doing so that's that's very important and uh, i think that's a very important message for uh, the youth especially all those people who want to pursue in this field that uh, you know to be ethical so um, that was very insightful thank you so much for sharing that uh kuntala uh and uh, when it comes to uh, the un sustainable development goals uh which do you think you are the most aligned with okay uh if you say about the sustainable development goals when i walk actually i walk out of my passion out of my love for nature and out of my love for wildlife okay so if you ask me about how i align with the sustainable development goals actually i do not keep the goals those goals in front of me and then walk towards them i just keep doing whatever i feel like which is right whatever is right i just keep doing but if i see uh, uh sustainable development goal 15 i can relate my works with this goal number 15 that is this life on earth because uh i use photography and i use law as a tool to protect nature 
tool to you know contribute towards conservation of nature and the cont contributes towards the biodiversity because we can see for example there are some glamorous you know animals like rhino like royal bengal tiger they're very glamorous right and so many people are there to protect them to for uh, to work towards conservation of those glamorous animals because they because of so many reasons okay but there are so many small small insects small small birds small you know animals which also need special care because in a ecosystem in a biodiversity everything has their own importance right so if we preserve only one animal and forget about the others which has uh, currently less importance then one day we will lose all those other animals or insects or birds also then our ecosystem will be gone okay so i uh, think and i to walk towards this thing because i whenever i get chance uh, it's not like i work in a very you know uh day-to-day -day basis but i try to do and i therefore i pursuing phd in this so that i can contribute to something towards the conservation of those kind of things those kind of you know insects and everything so i think protecting and preserving the animals insects and birds and trees which have less importance in the present situation I think we need to protect them also because they have less importance in present situation, but in future we will lose them because of mm -hmm. our ignorance, because of our, you know, uh, this thing. So we will lose them someday. So we need to focus on everything to protect our ecosystem. And this, we need to, you know, uh, you know work towards sustain, sustainability of the life, all the life on the art. So I think I try to do that. Yes, and you know, that uh, brings us to uh, one thing I can say that, you know, everything matters. You know, yeah, yeah. Just, uh, every life matters. Every life matters, everything in nature matters. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, I'm getting present to that when you when you when you're uh, telling me this uh, that everything really matters every single thing matters in in life and yeah in yeah yeah yes and yeah because like if this ecosystem is not all always about human beings or not always about the some glamorous you know glamorous animals but it you know it is consists of it is it is completed with all the other things also. We cannot be completed without them. So, yeah, it's important. Yeah, so, see, what, as they say, you know, alone we can make a difference, but together we can create an impact. So, it's not true, only human true. beings getting together, but rather even the whole ecosystem getting together can create a real impact. Exactly. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Super. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And, uh, I also wanted to know, we wanted to know that, uh, you know, in fact, not only we, but the youth of the country would want to know how ethical photography can help in wildlife conservation and protecting mother, mother nature. The art of ethical photography in itself, how can, how can that help in the conservation of wildlife and the mother nature and protecting mother nature? Can you tell us a little bit about yeah. that? Okay, so I think uh, wildlife photography or nature photography itself helps in contribution in, in contributing towards uh, conservation and protection of nature or the mother earth. Because through our photography, we can showcase, we can show, or we can publish various beautiful, you know, insects, various beautiful birds, and various beautiful natural creatures to others. Say, for example, if you go inside, if you go to Kachiranga, we can see the rhino very easily. Okay, everybody can see that. But we do not notice a small bug, a small insect. We do not notice that. Mm -hmm. But with macro photography, what happens? We can capture the small bug also. We can capture the structure, every details of the small bug. And if you see the macro photographs, then you will realize then 
those small small insects they are so beautiful they are so wonderful so with our photograph we can spread the awareness that every natural creature around us has a beauty and if we fall in <coughs> uh if we say people that this has this this particular insect has this much important they will not understand they will eventually forget but if we can show the beauty or if you can show the wonderful structure of their tiny insect then people will fall in love with those insects also they will start observing those insects and once they fall in love with those small small insects the small birds or everything around them then they will not harm them then they will not you know destroy them so it's very much important for everybody to fall in love with everything around us every natural creature around us so that we do not do not destroy them okay so i think photograph photography has that power to make people fall in love with everything we photograph so we have that power and ethics yes so ethics ethics is important because even if we capture a very beautiful photograph then if if we do not follow that uh, some kind of ethics uh, while clicking the photograph then eventually we will destroy our subject destroy our mother earth so it's very much important to follow our ethics because for example um, uh, as macro photographer uh uh this we use external flashlight in our cameras along with our cameras because we go so much closer to the insect or to, to so closer to the small bug that we naturally block the natural light so we need to fire flash on them but if we repeatedly flash fire on the tiny insect then what will happen we can burn their skin we can burn we can damage their eyes with the intense light of the external flash okay that's important so i always use a diffuser we i diffuse the light a bit even if i diffuse the light i do not fire the flash repeatedly on them i capture a photograph or two with the flash if i do not get a satisfactory picture i leave the subject because if i repeatedly fire the flash on them i can directly destroy their skin their their you know eyes and everything so it's important so it's important to you know these are not any these are not some kind of written rules or written ethics it's not it's our moral values or it's it comes from our uh, it's come from inside so we need to think about those things so small small things and that's how we can capture a beautiful photograph we can show other people we can make uh, we can make them fall in love with the uh, creatures and also at the same time we are not destroying their habitat we are, we are not destroying their you know their tiny you know organs or everything their bodies by following the ethics so it's important i think yeah and uh, speaking of habitat like uh, is there something that uh, you know can you mention something about habitat uh, like uh, you have uh, spoken about the insects and the creatures themselves mm -hmm. like for example a bird's mm -hmm. nest uh, most of the bird mm -hmm. watchers yeah, yeah. Uh, photographers of birds they end up destroying the nest so is there something that you can mention about that yeah 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 true nesting photography actually so i have seen so many you know reputed platform they use or they publish this nesting photographs because morally i think it's not right why it is not right because uh, say for example i have a sony uh, 100 200 600 mm lens it's a zoom lens okay i can capture a nesting bird or nesting you know a nest of a bird from a very lo for long distance from a from far away if i capture that photograph from far away then then that the bird do not notice us okay yes, exactly. the birds do not get distracted with that okay i can capture that 
okay i have captured a photograph and i have published a photograph on social media or other platforms okay the persons who are very enthusiastic about wildlife photography but do not have those kind of telephoto zoom lenses they are having supposed 200 mm lens only with that lens they need to go closer to the subject they need to go closer to the nest okay if they go closer they get inspired by my photograph of nesting uh, you know of a nesting bird and then they get inspired and then go closer to the nest in order to capture that particular situation then what will happen they do not have a you know telephoto zoom lens but they want to get capture the pictures so they go closer they distract the bird and the bird can fly away they, the bird can leave the mm -hmm. nest in order to protect herself so that way we can lose the next generation so it's i think it's important no, not to publish or not to inspire others or motivate others to capture those kind of you know sensitive photographs because nesting is a like it's a very private thing right so uh, because we are getting a next generation okay so we need to protect them we need to give them a space like we human beings we need some space right we need privacy be, just because they do not they cannot speak they it's not that they do not need that space they also need that space so i think we need to you know keep all these things in mind yeah mm -hmm. i mean that that's an absolutely perfect point that you brought out about privacy you know it's, we just think privacy is for ourselves but it's for every uh, creature mm -hmm. on earth. Privacy is even for the environment. Even Mother Nature has, yeah. a, has her own privacy. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, really uh, being thoughtful and uh, being uh, concerned about that is, uh, I think that's a wonderful message you're giving out to the youth of our country who, are, who want to get into this field of uh, photography. Uh, thank you for thank that. You. And, uh, can you tell the youth uh, and the budding photographers uh, as a message to them, what would be the true picture mm -hmm. for not using ethical methods of photography and the impact it will have on the environment? Like, we know what you're doing and the way you are, uh, you know, your, your ethical in your photography and your work. But if that was not happening, if you're not, or if, if nobody is doing that, then what would mm -hmm. be the impact if without anyone having done that? Yeah, that's so simple. We are destroying the, uh, our subjects. For example, I have spoken about this. We have discussed about this nesting photography, right? So if we do not follow that ethics, because uh, another example I can give, there are some photographers who use recorded bird calls to attract the birds, okay, in order to capture a photograph, recorded okay. bird calls. Oh, okay. okay, how would you feel? Yeah, okay, how would you feel if somebody invite you to a party and you go to the party and nobody is there? No friends is there. You'll feel bad. You feel cheated. Right? And if you then you get frustrated. Okay, so uh, same thing happens with this, uh, this wildlife photography when we use recorded calls. Yeah, when we, yeah, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, okay. So uh, when we use this kind of recorded calls, because we see during breeding time, for example, during mating time, a female bird is searching for a mate. If we play a recorded male bird sound then she will come she will come out we can capture her photograph very beautifully but she do not find her met and she get frustrated in this way we are contributing negatively towards the breeding process okay so in that period of the year she may lose the whole process out of frustration okay so if we do it repeatedly if because if I, as a single person, I do it, then 
I am inspiring others to do the same thing and others will also go to the same place do the same thing repeatedly people are doing those things and they get frustrated and out. we are just destroying the next generation we are destroying the breeding process that way for example another example i can give uh, like there are so many people uh, who use this baiting they used to bait the animals they used to bait the animals in order to attract yeah. them okay yeah. so that is also yeah that is actually an offense if i see from the legal perspective that is actually an offense okay so legally we should not do it and morally also we should not do this if we are continuously doing this kind of unethical practices then one day very you know because there are lots of budding you know wildlife photographers nowadays everybody is going to you know everybody is interested in wildlife photography because it's a very interesting subject and if we are showing them this parts then this uh, it, in a very short period of time we are just going to lose everything but every you know their ecosystem will be damaged with our this kind of behavior so this so, is what what i can get from what you're saying is that uh, uh, recorded bird calls or animal calls and baiting is a big no mm -hmm. i think that yeah of course absolutely it's a big no it's a, it's an offense also it's an offense yes that's an excellent uh, message that you have given the youth or uh, regarding this i think uh, whoever is watching right now would uh, realize that and i i think they they may not uh, i hope they don't uh, continue doing that yeah actually people are not aware the our newcomers there are some people who are aware about this and still they are continue doing this but there are some newcomers you know there are youths who do not they are not aware of this kind of you know unethical practices so we need to make them aware actually i think i feel so see that's what we are all committed for we want to create yeah presence. yeah uh, yeah the half the problem is solved when uh, people are aware the, exactly the, the exactly. biggest problem is lack of awareness so that's what we have exactly for. awesome awesome mm -hmm. thank you thank you for sharing that uh utala and uh, we really would like to know uh what's your vision and uh, what are your mm. plans for the future okay uh if you see in photography i do not have a definite you know vision for photography i do it out of my love towards this i continue i will continue do it Uh, continue doing it because i cannot live without photography first of all it's like i am i am breathing every day i need water for my survival photography is one of such, such essential so i like i want to pursue it all the time i need to you know grow with it i need to develop my skill of photography it's it's a can large and throw photography yes throw photography i want to spread awareness so that i can contribute towards the uh, conservation of mother nature and also through law it's another powerful tool uh, which i can use uh, towards the you know conservation of nature conservation of wildlife so uh, like uh, i i will keep do both do both both of the things and as my two hands like to go, you know contribute to as a conservation of photography to continue developing you know contribute to as a welfare of the you know nature and wildlife so that's the prime vision and how i will do it it i decide which time you know i do it continuously but with uh, like uh, you you would want to do the work that you're doing consistently for a uh, for many years to come consistently yeah 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 of course of course till the end of my life that that is i it will be always with me because so mm -hmm. sure 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 and wouldn't you agree that uh, the uh, that the the work that you do as a professor and uh, mm -hmm. as a photographer they are complementing each other right 
of course they do of, of course they do of course because uh, uh in uh like i work for the students okay for the student community i uh i, I i'm with them all the time almost all the time so if i make them learn something from the book only then it's a bit difficult for them to learn but if i can show a beautiful photograph or if i can apply those things in a practical way then they will remember it they will apply in their day to day life so it's it's interrelated photography and thus all this you know, law and teaching and working for the students it's interrelated everything is so i feel so wow that's super that's super thank you kundla and uh, so uh, yeah just uh, i would really like to uh, thank you for sharing <clears throat> you know all, you know your experiences and uh, your views and you know when i say view when i say focus you know this has everything uh, underlies from the eye from the vision and uh, yeah. it underlies from the camera you know so but this is very important in life as well i think what you have shared with us today uh, is more of a life lesson uh, you know uh, you know that everything matters and uh, every part of the ecosystem matters every part of life matters uh, and how to be thoughtful how to be how to be conservative not just do conservative things but the the being being conservative uh, true, true. and protective uh, towards nature you know we really got that and uh, thank you so much for uh, sharing that with us uh, we learned a lot today from you and uh, we really look forward to associating with you further and uh, you know the youth will definitely uh, you know uh, capture beauty in a different way after seeing this conversation with you uh, thank you so much kuntala for your time today thank you so much i am so glad uh, that you have invited me here i could share my thoughts and nice uh, you know nice you know to be with this organization or nature service you are you are uh, doing very well in field of nature conservation so like thank you so much for having me here so so it's our pleasure it's our honor and it's our privilege to have you here with us uh, kuntala and uh, i be wish you all the best for your pursuit thank you and for your further pursuit in uh, photography protecting mother nature and in your as uh, uh, as uh, uh, you know teaching law as well so uh, thank you so much thank you so so thank you so much take care yeah yeah it's you bye bye